Good morning. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. Everybody who's in the back, you all have to move up six pews. I like how you all laugh at me like I'm joking. <laughs> welcome, everyone, to worship this morning. And welcome to those of you who are joining us online. We're so glad that you have decided to join us on this beautiful New Year morning of 2023. Let us begin worship with our threshold moment. And here we are again, friends, for the last time sitting in a time of contemplation together. As this series draws to a close, I want to encourage you to continue the practice at home if it has resonated with you, giving you a bit of respite and calm here on January 1, the threshold of a new year appropriate for us to settle in and start the, this calendar year with aligning ourselves in the quiet, with the reflection of the sacred within us, that we might be inspired to be God's sacred doing in this world. I invite you to get comfortable wherever it is you are sitting. I invite you to open your hands upward in your lap. Close your eyes if you are comfortable doing so, and take a deep intentional and out if it's difficult for you to get your mind to quiet down or if you're making shopping lists in there that's okay don't judge it just take another breath in and out and thank and excuse for just a moment the tasks that might be popping up to po popping up on the to-do list of your brain that's it. Just take some time to settle in. I want you to bring to your mind's eye, to your memory and imagination, a time of day that you love. Is there a moment in your day where you get to catch a breath in some alone time? Or is it that you love the moment you see your kids after school? Or perhaps it's cooking in your kitchen, or watering plants, or some other simple, ordinary moment. As you see this scene, put it in slow motion. Now imagine particles of light showering slowly upon it. Let this reflection of light be an anointing of hope, foreseeing more and more of life through the lens of the sacred. Continue to just breathe and listen and see with your heart. sacred to Take one more deep breath in and out and open your eyes slowly. Please repeat after me. We pray for a new start this day. We pray for a new start this day. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see each relationship. We open to see each relationship as a gift of holy presence. As a gift of holy presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery. This is a gift of the Christ mystery. Lighting the way to the future. Lighting the way to the future. Upon this moment, upon this people, upon this place, the holy comes and sacred knowing. 
for sacred doing of God's plan. Living God, Christ mystery, spirit of new beginnings, we give you thanks for this commitment to help one another. As we take in the renewed life you offer, may we be a reflection of your light, expanding the sacred doing of our community to the alleviation of suffering wherever it is found. Amen. One of our core values as God's church here in Neffs is extravagant welcome. So repeat after me, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. I invite you to stand in body or spirit to greet one another and share God's light with one another. And we send our love and light to those who are watching and listening at home or during the week. Please rise. Yes, absolutely. Good morning.
At this time, I would like to invite our younger friends to go with Ms. Tiffany for a time designed just for them, and we promise to return your children to you. We promise. But if you are still, you still, Ms. Tiffany still has them, you can find them downstairs in the preschool rooms. Have fun. We've looked through the lens of the sacred and have experienced time, people, places, others, and ourselves as God's holy love reflected and incarnate in the world. Because of the experience of God's action of love toward us, we are called also to act, the sacred doing of alleviating suffering wherever it is found. We dedicate ourselves in this new year to sacred acts of justice and mercy, bringing grace to a hurting world reflecting the sacred in all we do. Hear this first reading from Isaiah chapter 63, verses 7 to 9. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favor to the house of Israel, that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said... Surely they are my people, children who will not act deceitfully. And he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and pity, it was he who redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The second reading is from Matthew, the second chapter, starting at verse 13. Now after the Magi had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the Magi. Then what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. Every year, when the clock strikes midnight on January 1st, we do the same thing over and over again. And I'm not talking about getting that New Year's kiss or raising a glass of any sparkling beverage of your choice, but we begin to make promises to ourselves. How many people sitting here with a show of hands have a list of promises or resolutions that they have decided that they're making for the year 2023. There's a few hands. 
There's a few hands. How many of you are not making resolutions at all? There are far more people not making resolutions than are making resolutions. For those of you who are not making resolutions, how many of you are not making resolutions because you know you won't follow through? <laughs> don't be shy, I'm not judging. <laughs> That's why I don't do it. I don't make resolutions because I know that I'm not going to follow through with a single one for longer than maybe a month. For those of you who are making resolutions, how many of you know that you're going to follow through with them for the entire year? I just had one lowly hand up in the back, and I can tell you, I think you're kidding. <laughs> I love you, but I think you're kidding. Every year, we as a society decide that we're going to make these, these things for ourselves. We're going to maybe read more books. That's typically on my list, and it follows through for about a month, and then I stop. Or we're going to lose that last 10 pounds that has just been dragging us down. Or we're going to go outside more often because we feel like we need to be one with nature. Or I was watching, my dad had the news on this morning and somebody said that they're going to go to church more often. That's a great resolution, though I don't honestly foresee that happening for some people. Our lists of things that we promise ourselves we're going to do gets long and it gets tiresome. And at one point or another, we eventually decide that we are just going to completely give up on them, and sometimes we give up on them before they have even started. So why is it that we decide that every January 1st is the time that we need to better ourselves for the new year? When have we decided that we are potentially bad and we need to do something that's better? What is so bad about the person that we are going into the end of one year and the beginning of another. Is there something that we do? Or is it that we decide that maybe it's just because that's what society tells us, that we have cleared out a year, say good riddance to that person I was, and now I'm going to be a better version of myself in the new one. Normally, when I hear people say their resolutions, they're typically ones about getting fit, getting in shape, and my response would be, you are just perfect the way you are. You don't have to do any of that. Don't, don't worry about it. But some of our things that we want to do are just, they're just not going to happen. And that, don't worry, you're perfect just as well as, just as good as you are, is just a platitude to move us forward. We all have these places in our lives in which we can probably improve upon. All of us, every single one of us, even the most perfect of beings, has a place in which we can improve. All through Advent and Christmas, we have been working on this series about reflecting the sacred, about focusing on finding sacred meaning in all people, in all places, in all things, and today, our focus is on the sacred doing. The things that we are called to do in the world that go well beyond what we normally think. The things that are expected of us as followers of Christ. It's easy to look at things and people and places and time and find it good and find it holy and find it sacred, but how do we find the holiness in the things that we do? Is it possible that the only way we can find the sacred in the things that we're doing is by putting intentionality behind it? Is it intentionality that makes it sacred? Or is it just that Doing the stuff we're supposed to do, even the good and even the mundane, is considered good and considered sacred. Do we have to have things that are over the top and do things that are over the top for them to be considered good and worthy? Or can we do things that are simple and know that small, tiny actions can create an impact? That the 
small, tiny deeds that we do can be considered good enough, considered worthy enough, considered sacred. Can we make these lists of things to do be ones that are not maybe go for a walk every day, but could be fighting injustices we see in the world, or helping those who can't help themselves, or being an open and safe space for people who don't have that? Can we feed the hungry more often, or clothe the naked, or visit the prisoner, or love those who are lost more? Every year, Christmas rolls around, and every year, I think about a quote by theologian Howard Thurman. I know a few years back we used this as a benediction for Christmas time, and it's called The Work of Christmas Begins. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music with the heart. Those are the things that we are called to do. Those are the things that God has requested of us, that Jesus teaches us, and that we, as followers of Christ in 2022, try to do, and sometimes 2022, wow, I just totally said the wrong year. That's how my year's starting. Those are the things in 2023 that we are supposed to be doing. So my question is, is now that the trees might be down and the tinsel is put away, how do we get to work? How do we get to work doing the work of Christmas, finding the lost and feeding the hungry and healing the broken? How do we get to work on the things that aren't necessarily bettering our bodies, but are bettering the world around us to be a kinder place? a more loving place, a place in which we don't have to be afraid of those around us. This is what we are called to do. The things that Howard Thurman tells us are the things that we're called to do, and these are the things that we should and we will do. We will not be the losing weight kind or reading more books kind or walking more kind. We're going to be the do more kind. We will do better to live into our Christ-called lives. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry. Even if they're small acts, they can make a large impact. We can be a little kinder, not just to others, but to ourselves. We can be a little happier finding sacred in all of the small deeds and the small things around us. And know that being the best versions of ourselves, even though sometimes we might miss the mark or it might not be what we expected it to be, is good enough. We are called to do sacred things in this world. Not easy things, not self-fulfilling things, but sacred things. So as we go into this new year, into 2023, rather than making our lists of things to do that might not impact the world, let us do the sacred things to help all of those around us. It's the time now to turn all of the mundane into the sacred and turn all of our doings into sacred doings. Amen. I invite you all to join in singing our next hymn.
are wells of the sacred, and God's presence is poured into creation in a never-ending flow of love. And we enter into a time of prayer that invites us to be refilled in ways that can help us pour out our love throughout the week. All we must do in this moment is open our hearts to the Holy One. God, we enter into this new world, this new year, and we are grateful for all of the things that we have and all of the things that we know you will do in our lives in 2023. We thank you for the lessons learned and even for hardships, for they make us who we are going forward. Guide our feet so that we may do the things that are sacred and the things that might be hard, but that will make difference in your world. Help us to love those who are lost, to heal those who are broken, and to feed all of your children in the world. Hear us, O oh Lord, as we speak the words of the St. Patrick's Prayer together. For Christ is with me, Christ is before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise. Now let us pray the words our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to take some time um, either today or during the week to look through the announcements that are in your bulletin about all of the good stuff that is going on here at Union UCC and all the ways in which you can serve God's world. Um, congratulations are in order for, um, on the birth of Hazel Lynette Klinger to Jason Klinger and his wife Corey. Big congratulations and to Grandpa Carl. All of them are doing well and she is just the cutest little peanut in the world. We also have on, <coughs> excuse me, you're welcome everybody at home who just got a really lovely cough in your ear. Um, you, uh, on January 14th, I think that's today, yeah, it's a Saturday, um, we have an Interrupted Silence con concert of Broadway in Naps. It'll be held in Memorial Hall. Ticket and information is in your bulletin. January 28th. Uh, Union UCC is going out to the Phantoms, so there's information on how you can purchase tickets. Um, if you have questions, please see Steve Karaha. His contact information is in there as well. And next week, we will um, have our, some of our college and young adult students who will be leading worship for, you, for us, and we will um, be celebrating Holy Communion, so please be sure to join us next Sunday as well. 
And so we pray over all of our offerings, God of birthing new life into the world and our lives, we bring our gifts to you and to this church and community. Gifts of heart, spirit, energy, love, time, resources, dreams, hopes, passion, compassion, meaning, and purpose and faith. We come to this manger and we bow asking for your guidance and blessing on these gifts and on us. Deepen our commitment to, deepen our commitment to you and to each other. Pour our light on these gifts and, pour, and on our church and all the people we pray. Amen.
come on. <laughs> we too often think that something sacred is, for, is far away and is not available to us. This past Advent season, we were tasked with reframing the way we recognize the sacred reflecting all around and through us. As we prepare to move into the world, we begin to reframe our view of the world and our circumstances, illuminating new ways of being the Christ, which is the anointed one, tangibly present. And so, friends, when you see lights twinkle, when you catch a reflection in a mirror, when you notice the sunlight dancing on a surface or a nightlight glowing in the darkness, let these be signs that, Christ, that the Christ light is revealed again and again in and through this world. Know that your brilliant presence is pouring more hope into a weary world and that God loved us by becoming us. This means that you are already reflecting the sacred. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Spirit of hope, amen.